Hi and welcome to a project which I've just written which composes two parts. The first is an uh, input screen which uses the Touch OSC program and you can see the blank screen there waiting to go and it is driven by means of a program running on Sonic Pi 3 on my Mac and uh, if we start that running which I'll do now you can see there's some initialization that takes place on the screen and when we look back to the uh, touch OSC screen you can see that there is a, a green dot running across the middle of the screen and this program is a 16 position 16 channel uh, sequencer for Sonic Pi and you can see the 16 steps taking place one after the other on the screen here but you can't hear anything because none of the 16 channels has uh, any selection on it. The top eight channels here uh, each uh, control a sample. Uh, the top one is the BD house sample, then there's a cymbal sample, a snare drum sample, um, high, medium and low tom tom, a snap and a chime. And you can turn these on and off as the sequence progresses simply by making a selection. So if we make a selection there, whoops, there, and there and there and there you can hear the BD house um, sample being played four times in the sequence and if we offset that with a symbol on the offbeat like this make it slightly different than the last one slightly earlier and let's add um, a snare drum in here perhaps as well Quite a loud snare there and we'll add in some tom-toms in various places in the beats I'm just adding them more or less at random at the moment and perhaps let's put a snap in so we begin to get uh, a rhythm taking place perhaps put a chime in the middle there and that is repeating uh, as we go across the screen. Down at the bottom there's a slider which we can use to adjust the tempo and there are uh, five preset positions here from very slow to uh, a more middling speed, slightly faster and very fast. We'll leave it on the middling speed there. So that's the, um, the first part of this. Um, we can also uh, take just a segment of the sequence uh, if I press this button which has got an S on it which stands for start although the sequence continues playing the green track has disappeared and it's waiting for me to signify where we want the subsequence to start so let's start it there and you can see now that we've got a shortened sequence taking place and let's end it there so we've got a slightly different rhythmic pattern taking place now and simply by altering this without altering the pattern at all we can get completely different sounds being produced by this. Now the bottom part of the pattern uh, lets us put in some um, notes and we've got eight positions here and I've got eight notes of a scale C3, D3, E3 up to C4. Uh, that's when we're using the default uh, synth. In fact for the other three synths available I've got it raised up an octave because it sounds a bit clearer. Um, so let's see if we make that going. Before we do that, we'll go back to the full sequence and I could set the start to the beginning and the end to the end of the sequence, but there's a button at the top which has got a capital A standing for all on it and if I press that one, then the sequence switches back to the full position. Just before we add the notes, there's one further feature we can demonstrate and that is this button here that's marked pause single mode, uh, pause single step mode. So if we do that, it simply pauses the sequence where it's got to. If I remove that, it will continue from where it was. But we can also just tap it to single step. We can't go faster than the rate set for the uh, tempo, but if I make that very fast, then we can actually tap either slowly or faster. Which again gives us uh, further features that we can try. We'll let that go in its very fast, set it back to the more normal speed. Let's now add some notes in here. It's a bit 
pass to that one. We can get chords as well in this case. I'll choose ones more perfect to the harmony. Say B and a G, and let's play the F with an A there. If I want to quickly wipe out a row, I simply press the button where the row's uh, situated at the end, and that wipes out that entire row. So we can actually slowly reduce this down to nothing again. We've just got the bottom row now giving some notes in there and we can reduce that completely. Uh, we've also got, oh Sam Aaron's just retweeted something, <laughs> got a note come in there. Um, let's um, also see that there's a button here which says clear patterns. Now that's a pretty dangerous thing to do if you spent ages creating one and so there's an enable button beside it that you have to prime it with before that will work. Let's try that. Enable and we can do that. It stays on the enable button for a second and that is so for the other buttons underneath that which let me load in pre-written and saved sequences or write a sequence out to one of the available slots. There's four slots for files. That's about as much room as I had on the screen. So let's just read in the first one and that comes in straight away and plays and it indicates that that's the last read position. If we do that again, read the second one. Again, this is protected. All of these are uh, so that we can't inadvertently read over the top of a sequence without uh, first enabling that. While that's playing, let's just change the synth. Most of the other synths are a bit quieter. So we can, in fact, alter the volumes to balance them up again. Put down the sample volume and put up the note volume. If I go back to there, that's too loud, so we have to reduce it for TB303. Put it up for the others. Get rid of that. And there it goes again. So we'll stop that, and that gives you a good indication of how the program works. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, the software is fully available uh, with um, an article written on my um, blog on rbnpywordpress.com and we c you can read it there and get a link to download the software and try it out yourself. Thank you for watching.